Okay, we're back in my kitchen, this time to explain uh, computer memory and how it's organized. Now, surprisingly, kitchens are very similar to how your computer organizes its memory. Let's talk that through. The most important part of the kitchen, the heart of the kitchen is the oven. Well, in a, in a computer, the heart of the computer is the central processing unit. It's the part where all the action happens. And in order for this to be useful, we need to provide it with some ingredients. We need to provide it with some food to cook and things to happen. And a CPU is just the same. A CPU requires instructions and data in order to operate. So where are we going to get those things from? Well, we've got this whole area over here, which is kind of like my working area. This is like my primary memory. If I want to cook with something, I'm going to have to get it here. So let's imagine we need some, uh, some ingredients. We might go to our longer term storage, our secondary storage. This is like the hard disk. And let's say I get some ingredients. How about we get some tomatoes and uh, got some garlic and a pepper. I don't know what we're going to create, but let's just see. So, so in order to cook with these, in order for this to get into my central processor, I've got to take it out of my long-term storage. And, but I don't just put it straight into my CPU. It goes into my sort of holding area where I get together all the things I'm going to need. Um, so this is like my data, okay? Because CPUs, uh, programs, they, they have instructions and instructions tell the CPU how to process data. So this is like the data, the stuff that's going to be processed. It's going to be all mixed together and make something delicious. Um, the other thing in my working memory are those instructions. So if I'm going to follow Jamie Oliver's Ministry of Food, um, there's no point this being in my long-term storage, which might be, say, over here where I store all of my programs. Again, if I'm going to use them, I've got to open them up. I've got to take them off the shelf. I've got to take them into my working memory so that I can then read the instructions. At which point I discover that I've got completely the wrong ingredients for this recipe, but that isn't the point for this analogy. So in my working area, I have got my instructions, my programs. I've got the data that I'm going to be using. And these are now readily accessible at the cooker okay, at the CPU. So as I want to access stuff and I'm cooking and I'm chopping and I'm changing and I'm doing things, I'm getting it from the working area because that's so much nearer than going all the way over to the fridge. I don't want to have to go to the fridge every time I want to get something out. If I want to be cooking and processing my instructions, I want to have everything ready at hand. Now there's another form of memory that's really, really close to the CPU. In fact, it's within the CPU and it's called the cache. And this is where we store the frequently used instructions or recently executed instructions. Things we're doing all the time. Now in my kitchen, that's the equivalent of this little pot here. Whatever I'm cooking, I tend to use salt, pepper, oil, garlic. These things get used all the time. So rather than putting those away in cupboards um, and having to get them out every single time I cook, they're nearby. So I can access them all the time. If I'm cooking something, I can put a bit of salt in, taste, needs a bit more. That's really near. So that's like my cash really close to the CPU. This is like my RAM, it's my working memory, it's where I store stuff temporarily, only while I'm actually doing the cooking. When I've finished cooking, that's all cleared away. It's gone, that's not there any longer. My long-term storage is in the fridge. Now there is one other final type of storage called tertiary storage, that's where we archive stuff long-term. So if I'm not going to be using something for a really long time, I'm going to archive it. It's going to go in my long-term storage. This is like a CD on a shelf or an external hard disk, or in this case, it's a freezer. And if I want to access any of the food, like a ribeye steak, I have to take it out of my long-term storage, and it's then going to be transferred probably onto my secondary storage, the fridge, um, and the process of defrosting that or accessing that storage, it's going to take a very long time. It's going to be very, very slow. So it's furthest away from the CPU. And it's probably the biggest capacity. So I've got loads of capacity, but I've got to wait for ages to access that data. Um, and that's really similar to, to offline tertiary storage. Big capacity, cheap storage, very, very slow to access. Secondary storage, your, your, your SSD drive, your hard disk drive, um, a bit nearer, 
Long-term storage, it doesn't disappear overnight, doesn't disappear when you finish, it's permanent. Um, and it's where we store things. Maybe when I've finished processing my, my ingredients and I've made my food, I might store the results long-term back in there for another day. My RAM, my primary storage, needed uh, to actually temporarily store the ingredients and the instructions I'm using while I'm creating things. And then finally, the CPU itself with its very, very small local memory for very frequently used instructions. Again, these, you know, there's not a lot of space here. I can't store very much, but it's just what I need regularly to make my uh, execution of my instructions that much quicker. So that's how the organization of ingredients and recipe books and work surfaces and fridges in a kitchen is really similar to how memory is organized in your computer.